Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. It's another edition of Growing in Grace, our podcast that happens every week right here at growingingrace.org. I'm the Cap, Mike Kapler, Mr. Breeze, Joel Brzezinski is with me as well. And uh, wow, this has been this has been quite a ride, Joel. I know we just recently kind of celebrated our 600th. It was our 600th podcast, right? No, 900. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> It goes by so fast, I think I'm losing count, but uh, it's been a good ride, and, and I, I hope it continues because uh, this is uh, kind of therapeutic for me to just to be able to, to talk about the good news and, and to know that others are kind of eavesdropping in on us and can hopefully take away something good that will be with them for the rest of their lives and, and maybe even for all eternity. That, that gives us some satisfaction here that uh, we can provide you with a message of, of good news. You know, and when Paul sometimes referred to my gospel. He actually said that sometimes in his writings. He would say, my gospel, according to my gospel. He's talking about just some good news that he wants to share with people. And yeah. uh, that's what we've got here. Yeah. And, and it is it is therapeutic. I mean, that's a good word. I, sometimes I just find myself talking into, you know, i got an app on my smartphone to, um, you know, it's a voice recorder. And I used to have a, a cassette recorder that I would carry around with me, a cassette voice recorder. And just find myself preaching into it. Or sometimes if I don't even have that, I'm just talking out loud as I'm driving down the road, just preaching this stuff to the air, you know, but really I'm preaching to myself and I'm thinking, man, people need to hear this stuff. It's because it, like you said, it's good news. That's really what the word gospel means. Many people know that, of course, the word gospel means good news. And so God gave us the gospel, the good news, because he's a good God and he wants us to know the good news that he has made it completely and utterly possible for us to be with him. He loves us. He has loved us eternally. And he desires us. You know, what does God want from me? What does God want from you? He wants you. He, he, he wants you because he loves you. And he made that possible through, he made that relationship possible through, uh, believe it or not, the blood of Jesus because of the fall of man, the remedy needed to take place. We became unrighteous. We became sinners. And God didn't just wag his finger and say, oh, those ungodly sinners, I don't want anything to do with them. No, he loved us so much that while we were still sinners, <laughs> Jesus Christ went upon that cross. And as we talked about last week, he became sin for us so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. And so what is this righteousness? When it says that we've become the righteousness of God, what is this? Well, we we're talking about how to, how to go about this. And, and one thing that happened was that God gave the law, and he gave the law to Israel, to the Jews. And they thought, and understandably so, I guess, they thought that if I keep the law, I'm righteous. You know, if you look at the beginning of Romans 10, it says that they were ignorant of God's righteousness. And I'm going to emphasize that. They were ignorant of God's righteousness, and they were seeking to establish their own righteousness. And in doing so, they had not submitted to the righteousness of God. And so following the law in trying to become righteous and trying to establish righteousness by following the law makes a person actually ignorant of God's righteousness, and they've not submitted to God's righteousness. And now I jumped all the way to near near the end, or at least later in the book of, he, of Romans, but earlier on in the book, Paul talked about how the gospel reveals God's righteousness. And God's righteousness is a gift. It's something that we can only receive as a gift. It's not something that we can receive or attain to by what we do. Hear this. What you do does not make you righteous. You can try and try and try and work and work and work as hard as you can and never 
I mean, and, and, and never even get anything wrong. Let's just say that you lived this life perfectly and did everything right according to the law of God, and you would still not be righteous because this righteousness that we need is the righteousness of God. It's his very own righteousness, and it's something that we can only receive as a gift. So what do you think about that? This, this is a primary theme for us in the New Covenant, this thing called righteousness. It's a big deal. It, it's, it's a foundational cornerstone part of the covenant. And you laid it out very well there, Joel. I mean, it's, it's something that allows us to be acceptable to God, not based on our own merit, but based on what Christ did. I mean, you can't get a better deal than that because Jesus did it all perfectly. And that was the requirement. Keep that in mind, something we've talked about quite a bit over the years. Perfection was the requirement. I saw recently where somebody had posted something on Facebook where they were suggesting when Jesus was talking in, in Matthew 5 about how when he was talking to his Jewish disciples, how their righteousness would need to exceed that of the Pharisees. Somebody wrote that the Pharisees kept the law perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> See, the, the dirty little secret is that's what they wanted people to think, but that's really not true. Whoever posted that was way off the mark. The Pharisees, nor any other human being, never kept the law. They could never declare themselves as doers of the law. They might have been attempters. Mm -hmm, <laughs> they were, mm -hmm. were never that's successful a, <laughs> in accomplishing that goal. But that was the requirement. So, yeah, back when the law was given through Moses— Israel stood there with their fists clenched and their nose in the air, and they said, we will do this. This is the contract. We will do this, and it will be righteousness to us. This will bring us righteousness. We're, we're going to do this thing right. And so when you consider that and now carry it over into our new covenant of Christ, you begin to see that works are, are a completely separate issue when it comes to righteousness, justification, Holiness, sanctification, all of those are gifted to us through Jesus Christ and the finished work that he did. So that's important because you see that religion sometimes kind of, or, or sometimes we bring it on ourselves with our own mindsets, but it kind of gives you the impression that you need to be trying harder. You need to do it right. You need to quit doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. You better be doing this. And it goes on and on. It's a never-ending, ever-changing set of circumstances and rules based on a variety of different things, including the surrounding culture and uh, other things. So the Jewish people were given this list of over 600 commands, demands, statutes, and rules that they could never begin to live up to. This was what the law demanded. And so to think that God is somehow still expecting that out of us when it was obvious man would never be able to achieve any of those things, God provided something better, himself instead of us. But people still feel like they need to be a part of the equation. Look, you really are righteous. It's not how you behave. It's not through the works that you do. As you said, Joel, it's gifted through Christ, his life in us. We died with him on the cross, and we were raised with him. It was something that God did on our behalf. He fulfilled what needed to be done. And that's why in the New Covenant, there's no longer any boasting as there would at times under the Old Covenant. Yeah. And so, and so the, the question comes up, then, then why did God give the law? And, and real quickly, we won't get too deeply into this, but basically the law was given so that people would realize that they cannot be righteous by what they do. You try to follow the law, and you, you're supposed to come to this point where you realize, I can't do this. Romans 3.19, you know, carrying on with Romans here, Paul wrote this. Now, we know what, that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and the world become guilty before God. That was the reason the law was given. It was made to shut mouths. Not to open boasting mouths, look at what I can do, look at how good I am, but it's meant to shut those boasting mouths and make the world guilty before God. Therefore, the next verse says, for Romans 3.20, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. 
That's why the law was given. It wasn't given as a means of people trying to make themselves righteous and attaining to it. Like you say, they were really just attempters of the law. Nobody has ever really been a keeper of the law. But verse 21, but now the righteousness of God, again, God's righteousness, not my righteousness, not my works, not what I can do, not how well I can keep the law, but the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So you look at all the writings of Moses, the law, you look at the prophets, everything about this righteousness of God is witnessed there. You'll see it there. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. And it goes on to say how everyone has fallen short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness. <laughs> Remember that focus. I'm really intentionally staying focused on his righteousness because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So get this, it's not my works that make me just or righteous, but he is just, and he is the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus, not the justifier of the one who follows the law. Yeah, Joel, uh, Joel it's, it's simple. I mean, God is righteous, he is holy. He made us that way, as he is, as Christ is, so are we also in this world. So it's it's not one of those things where, again, don't tie your true identity of righteousness into how you behave. Good behavior, that's a good thing. Doing the right things, avoiding the wrong things, not sinning. I mean, that that's all a good thing, you know. It's just that, unfortunately, sometimes religion gets the focus on that instead of with who you already are. As you said, Joel, this, this gift of righteousness that has made us completely acceptable before God, completely clean before him, completely sanctified and justified before him, forgiven, all of these great things, all of these things were gifted to us, but it's now a part of, of who we are. And we can walk in this once we begin to understand this is who we are. Instead of being told what we should always do and what we shouldn't do, uh, how about telling people this is who you are? Now you can be empowered through God's grace to, to live in a certain way apart from the law. Right, yeah, apart from the law and apart from self-effort and apart from always striving to try harder. And so we'll get into more of that next week. People always trying to improve their own output of righteousness and yet falling flat on their face, struggling to know where they stand with God, always trying to improve their behavior through trying harder. It doesn't work. We'll get into that next week right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.